Hi, and welcome to today's little quickie. Today we're going to be looking at or answering two questions. The first, well, questions uh, come from Derek North from Cape Town, South Africa, and his questions have to do with the drill point gauge. The next question comes from Dartsy and Deme in France, and their questions have to do with supplementary explanations concerning the whole uh, tapping with lubricating oil imbroglio. Uh, so they want to understand why it is not recommended to use lubricating oil uh, for tapping uh, metals. Now, I remind you, we're talking lubricating oils because cutting oils can help in most cases. So we're going to take a look at that. But let's start with Derek's question. Derek wants to know if I could send him a metric version of the drill point gauge project and what are the radii and holes, the tapped holes, uh, what do they have to do with the drill point gauge? What are they for? Well, there's a simple explanation to all of this and that is I don't need to uh, send you a metric version of the drawing because the only dimension that's important on that project for this tool to function well is the 59 degrees and degrees well metric or imperial it's the same system so that's the easy answer what are the radii the large one and the small one and what are those tapped holes for well the tapped holes are there to force students to learn how to position drill and tap small diameter holes because you got to remember this is a teaching project so the, the project has more to do with learning proper techniques than it has to do with producing a useful tool now the tool is useful because we need to find a reason and those holes well they can be used as a gauge for verifying small screws uh, because they're always a bit of a pain to measure so you can just thread them into the appropriate hole and know what thread you have so that's what they're for the large radii well they're there again to learn proper filing techniques and with this project the drill point gauge well we're learning angular filing uh, and we're learning how to file radii uh, accurately so that's what the project's all about so really you can round everything else off to something in metric that suits your purpose just make sure you get that 59 degrees with the two flat and accurate gauging surfaces so Derek I hope that answers your question now let's take a look at the chip formation problem with taps the question is why do taps bind in holes and what can I do to reduce that binding action? You got to remember that a tap is prisoner of the hole that it's trying to produce a thread in. And what does that mean? Well, it's got nowhere to go. And why is that important? Well, let's look here at a basic sketch of a chip being formed. Now we have a tool in perfect purple, not the tool here, I mean the drawing here. We have a purple tool that's uh, moving across the blue part here in this direction. We have an indication of our cutting depth and in red we have the material that's going to be removed and the chip separating from the tool. Now in the chips, speeds and feeds videos, because there's two of them, it's a part one and part two, well we talk about the four the different phases of the chip production. And we can see them here roughly we have in this area here the compression, the material compression, and then we have the well penetration, compression, flow, and separation. Now that's important to note, but what I didn't explain clearly the last time and in the chips, feeds, and feeds video is that as your tool gets worn down on its tip, there's a small amount of material that wants to go under the tool. It gets burnished or squished into the surface. Now as long as that's a small amount it's not a problem 
because you stay within the range of what your material can handle as far as compression goes and the force that it exerts up is minimal in those situations but if your tool starts to get worn even just a little bit more well that pressure the upward force gets to be quite impressive now on most machines that's not a huge problem i mean our tools are never perfectly sharp so the, why is it not a problem well most machines have cutting tools that have uh, areas where the material can get around the tool and if not well you can always have tool deflection a small amount or even a little givey machine so your machine does have some deflection to it so in other words you have something to play with and the tool has even if we're just talking about very small small amounts of distance it has somewhere to go that's not true with a tap. A tap is prisoner of its hole. If thy pressure gets higher on one side of the tap because the teeth are very slightly worn, well it's going to push the tap into the other side that is also worn and pushing back against it. The end result is a tap that gets jammed in the hole. Now anything that we can do to reduce that problem was going to help us to tap. So what is our problem? It's getting material to flow and separate rather than to try and gish under a very slightly worn tap. Now, lubricating oil makes the problem worse because it will encourage a small amount of material to try and slide under the tool. Whereas a cutting oil, which isn't really a lubricant, well, stops the chip from binding to the face of the tool and promotes an upward slide and separation. And that means that it reduces pressure and reduces the amount of material that wants to try and get under the cutting lip. And in the case of the tap, it reduces the amount of force required to tap and it reduces how much the tap wants to wedge itself inside the hole. So I hope that helps with the explanation. Now obviously at one point the tap is just too worn and you're going to know that because as you tap it gets quite difficult and when you back up you hear a snapping noise and that's because you're wedging into the hole and as you back out well it lets go all of a sudden. You are very close at that point to breaking your tap on the backstroke so you've got to watch out for that. Last thing I want to mention that wasn't clear with the chip speeds and feeds videos has to do with this clearance angle on the end of the tool. It's 8 to 12 degrees for most general purpose work on steels. And that is crucial because as material small amounts get compressed under, if I don't have enough clearance here, some of it could flake and come back and wedge itself under the tool and that will wreak havoc on your finish. So to avoid that we have this clearance angle. Like I say that is important but more important is to say that a tap does not have that. A tap has no secondary or primary clearance on its teeth. It conforms to the diameter of the thread you're trying to cut and that really just increases this whole problem. Uh, last thing to mention after everything else is this angle, 8 to 12 degrees for most steels. We get used to doing that on our lathe tool bits. But remember, if you're cutting a very mild material like aluminum, well, you might want to increase that uh, clearance angle to somewhere around 15 degrees. So I hope, Darty and Desmes, that that answers your question. A cutting oil promotes chip formation and reduces the amount of material wanted to wedge under the uh, cutting tool. Uh, taps are prisoner of their holes and they have no back clearance and that just means that it's a real problem. Now I can hear the next series of questions coming. Why doesn't it happen with drills? Because drill bits are prisoner of their hole. But remember, we already mentioned drills are have two cutting lips and they have back clearance 
they have very small margins and they have cutting lips and, and they never produce a hole that is uh, equal or smaller to the diameter of the drill. The drilled hole, because of its chiseled edge and all the geometry of the tip, never produces a perfect hole that conforms to the diameter of the drill. It's always slightly bigger. So even if drills are inside a hole, well, they rarely get wedged in the hole, unless it's terribly worn. But this problem does occur, the tap in the hole wedging problem does occur with reamers at a lesser, in a lesser uh, amount because reamers do have back clearance. But if a reamer is worn, well, it will tend to want to wedge into its hole. So I hope that answers those questions. Now, I'm going to break with tradition here. And I'm going to say right away, and even if we're not at the end of this video, and you're going to see why in a few seconds, I'm going to say right away, have fun, be safe, and happy machining. Because now I want to call out Jim Milne up in Greenland. Now, Jim uh, falls asleep often while watching my videos, and that's understandable, because I have that kind of voice and also because he watches them later in the evening. Wake up, Jim! He wrote to me, and Jim, I got your, your message that says that you were once the proud owner of a 1963 Corvette, my dream car. And, well, I guess that makes you one lucky duck. Now, that's uck with a D, not uck with an F, because that would make you one lucky f***.